Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Uh, guys, um, I did a video yesterday about what Ami Khan said about, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Terence Crawford being the more skilled fighter and uh, Canelo Alvarez, you know, he feels he's better than Canelo Alvarez. And I said right away that I think Amir's saying that because he's training with Terence Crawford and Terence Crawford is there supporting Amir Khan for the Kel Brook fight. And he he even said that I'm here to support a friend, you know? Uh, so obviously Crawford and Khan are friends. So of course he's gonna say uh, that Crawford is better than Canelo Alvarez. I think obviously if you're closer with a guy and I'm friends with you, I'm going to say you're better than that other guy that, you know, you guys are being talked about as being the two best. If I'm friends with you, I'm going to say you're better, right? That's just natural, you know. Um, but I, like I said, I think Amir has a lot of respect for Canelo. I think he rates Canelo very highly. Like I said, he even said that Canelo would beat Roy Jones, which is even some of Canelo fans would find laughable. That I, I, I think it's hard to say that, you know, he'd beat Canelo would beat Roy Jones. I think Roy Jones was probably one of the most naturally gifted. However, I do think... Canelo, it wouldn't have been an easy fight. I, I don't think that would have been an easy fight whatsoever. I think Canelo was a very difficult difficult style for anybody. I think Canelo's a, a very special kind of fighter. I think people are very disrespectful to his style, come forward uh, style. And because he doesn't have the silky feet of a Sugar Ray Leonard, a Muhammad Ali, he doesn't have those kind of skills. Everyone, I feel like people disrespect Canelo's style and they prefer a style like Crawford. Uh, in the history of the sport, it feels like those styles are more preferred and more respected and given a lot more credit than some, some someone like Canelo, who's a lot more flat-footed, um, but he breaks his opponents down very well and he knows how to break. He breaks down skilled fighters like Caleb Plant very well and takes them out. Now, I'm not saying Caleb Plant's an all-time great. He's yet to fight a nimble-footed like, like a Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, but th how many fighters do you get like that with that kind of skill set, with that kind of ability? Very few and far between. You know, so Canelo Alvarez has been in the ring with guys like Floyd Mayweather, who was exceptionally gifted. And he beat Canelo when Canelo wasn't so much in his prime. So you, you've got to give, you've got to give um, Floyd credit because he was towards the back end. But when people say back end, Floyd was also at the best in the world at that point. So we need to bear that in mind that Floyd wasn't an ordinary fighter when he fought Canelo Alvarez. He was considered the best in the world. He was number one at the time, pound for pound. Um, so Canelo Alvarez does have a, has had a little trouble. I think he's definitely improved with that style. Um, I... I... I said something yesterday which I find to be very important. There's not one way to skin a cat. There's many ways to skin a cat. Canelo Alvarez might not be as aesthetically pleasing to the eye. I actually find his style more entertaining than Crawford's. If I'm, and if it's just a personal point of view, I like, I prefer his style. But Crawford has a very, you know, he's he's a brilliant fighter. You know, he's a switch hitter. He's fast of hands. He's fast of feet. Uh, he's got great skills. A lot of people say that Crawford has the better skills over Canelo Alvarez. Again, the end goal is to win a fight, right? No matter how you do it, Canelo also has great skills. You know, he, he knows how to break down his opponents. He knows he's got, he's he arguably pound for pound a bigger puncher than Crawford. Uh, Crawford fights a different way. They're both great in their own ways, but Canelo Alvarez's resume means he's in the ring with much better competition than Crawford. Just because of the po the politics which are stopping Crawford, you know, from fighting the the real top guys like your Spences, and and that's the thing. Canelo Alvarez has been in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. Canelo Alvarez has shown me he's got a great chin. Canelo Alvarez has shown me that you know he can fight the best, beat the best. Uh, Crawford in his division at 147, he's yet to do that. Really, you know, he hasn't fought Keith Thurman, he hasn't fought Errol Spence, you know. Um, you know, I, I think Porter, the way I view him at welterweight, I view him as the best after the best. Uh, never viewed him as the number one guy in the division. Um, and, you know, that was a good win. He stopped him. He first guy to stop him. But I think until he fights your Porters, your Thurmans, um, I mean, sorry, until he fights your Thurmans and um, Spences, I think Thurmans kind of passed it. I think the real fight at welterweight needs to be... Um, Spence, I think I think the other challenges that he'll probably face are probably Virgil Ortiz and Jaron Ennis, uh, which probably he's not interested in at this point. I think the fight that he's interested in is Errol Spence, and he hopes he's 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 praying that that happens. Um, 
So in terms of their skill sets, I think they're both very good at what they do. And when you get to that kind of level, it's who you prefer. I used to get very irritated when Teddy Atlas used to say that Crawford and Lomachenko are the two best fighters in the world. And he says it, and he used to prefer Lomachenko. He really liked Lomachenko. When you get to that level, and I, I always kind of found it weird that why Canelo doesn't get put up there, you know, uh, Canelo was always behind those guys. And I was always like, how are those guys better than Canelo? I don't quite understand. Canelo's resume is far better. Canelo's got good skills as well. Just because those guys look more aesthetically pleasing to the eye and their skills look better. But can, like I said, there's no one way to skin a cat. Um, and I just feel like Canelo doesn't get the credit for his style because his style is a bit more, you know, come forward, powerful, you know, but he's a very educated in what he does. I, I don't really get why he doesn't seem to get the credit just because his style is not more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, boxing isn't all about the slick guys, you know, there's other styles that have been very, uh, you know, have been very successful in the sport of boxing. But it seems like the guys that are the slicker versions, like Canelo's not a slick fighter. He's not Shukri Leonard. He's not a Muhammad Ali. He's not that type of fighter. But he, he, he at what he does, he's the best at what he does. Uh, Canelo Alvarez can fight. He can box with you in the center of the ring. He can walk you down, pressure you. He can be a pressure fighter. Uh, he's got very good punching power. He's got very good hand speed. You know, his foot, feet weren't the greatest in, in, back in the day, but his feet have become more educated as he's, as he's grown older. His experience is now through the roof as well. So his boxing IQ is on a very, very high level. He knows how to break guys down. As I've told you, when he was fighting Amir Khan, the way he broke him down, uh, the you know way he was you know targeting Billy Joe's body, you know trying to slow him down. Uh, Canelo Alvarez has very, very high boxing IQ. Uh, so does Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford, just just that Terence Crawford's resume is nowhere near Canelo Alvarez's resume. So you can't really compare because one guy's been fighting at a much higher level than the other guy. So it's kind of hard to compare their careers at this point. But like I said, if 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 Terence Crawford goes and beats Errol Spence in emphatic fashion, then we then we've got a discussion on our hands. If Errol Spence goes. I mean, if Terence Crawford goes to one fifty four and cleans that out, then we've got a discussion on our hands. You know, because Terence Crawford then will be moving. You'd be moving uh, in a way where you have to start then start considering him. You know, pound for pound, number one. At this point, I just don't see his resume, his achievements compared to Canelo's. I don't think really compare. Um, and I think Crawford's got a lot more to do if he wants to be considered number one. I think he'll be. I think he's the number two after number two after Canelo. And it's funny how Lomachenko is not even rated that highly anymore. How he's dropped out the pound for pound list because of the fact that he lost. You know, he he lost uh, a couple of times, so now people don't view him as the number one pound for pound. They don't view him in the top five even. And it's kind of funny, and that just shows that how hard it is to stay on top. And Canelo's been at top for a very long time now. So this is why people got to understand is that for me, it's not about, it's about longevity as well. Longevity for me is, is a part of greatness because some people, they get to the top and they're very athletically gifted like Roy Jones, but then they, then they slide away. Their career goes into decline, right? Canelo's been able to stay at the top for a, almost a decade now. Like he's been at the top for a very long time. When I mean a decade, I mean like he was in the top 10 pound for pound, maybe when he fought Floyd, maybe. Or if he wasn't, he was close. And then after that, you know, he got himself into a top 10 pound for pound. And you could have to say for about at least a half a decade now, he's been at the top of, of the pound for pound list in the sense that maybe not number one, but he's been at the top, like considered num considered top three, top four. And and consistency is key in, in anything. Well, consistency is key to being great. And I think that needs to be admired, that how consistent he's been for a, such a long period of time. Um, to be in the top 10 pound for pound for such a long period of time. I think that just shows how great someone is, you know, where a lot of guys fall out after a period of time. But longevity is key. Like Lomachenko, people said he was number one pound for pound not so long ago, but nobody's saying that now. How long did he stay in that pound for pound list? You know, he dropped off, whereas Canelo's still there. See, a lot of people had Canelo at number three after Lomachenko and Crawford, but Canelo is plugged away, plugged away, and now he's number one and an undisputed number one in the world. And that, for me, is, is something, the longevity is something that shouldn't be ignored when it comes to talking about somebody's greatness. When it comes to talking about how great somebody is, that's something that should be considered. Because that, for me, that determines how great somebody is, longevity. Because longevity, staying at the top for a long period of time is hard. Because there's somebody looking to come and take your throne. There's somebody looking to come and take you down. And I think that shouldn't be ignored. I think Canelo Alvarez's achievements and what he's done shouldn't be ignored, shouldn't be overlooked. And for me, sometimes they are. 
the longevity of him to be at the top of where he's been is, is something that gets ignored. You know, Crawford hasn't been at the top for as long and his level of competition, even while people consider him at the top, hasn't been great. You know, Lomachenko has suffered a couple of losses. You know, there's other guys like Usyk. He's now another one, but he's, again, been a guy. He's been on the top for a while. Um, you know, did what he did at Cruiser, now what he's done at Heavyweight. But let's see how long he can sustain it. Let's see, you know, if he can beat a Tyson Fury. You know, then he's also in discussion of being compared to Canelo. Because what he would have done would have been something phenomenal. So, again, I think I think we need to give these guys a lot more credit. And maybe they, 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 you know, they someone like Canelo gets. I think Canelo's longevity and and him being at the top for the, on top of the sport for as long as he has is sometimes underappreciated and not given so much credit. I think we sometimes ignore how good and how great Canelo was. Um, so yeah, I think he de definitely deserves a lot more credit. He definitely deserves a lot more respect. And hopefully, with time, you know, he'll he'll get that. He'll get that. And you know, because I feel like his resume is the best in boxing. Uh, I think out of all the guys that are at the top, he's been at the top for the longest. Uh, so like I said, for me, longevity is something that I view as greatness, not just a guy that's been there for two years and then he disappears. No, Canelo's been on top for about 10 years now. You know, he's been, he's been the talk of the town for the last decade. You know, that's something that can't be sneezed at. That's something that needs to be appreciated and looked at and given respect to. Irrespective of whether he's not, you don't think he's the best in the world or you think Crawford's skills might be better than his, the fact is he's been on top for, the, for a very long time. He's been on top longer than Crawford. He's been on top longer than Lomachenko. He's been on top longer than Usyk. That shouldn't be ignored. Like I said, longevity is a very, very... For me, longevity is very important to greatness because there's many fighters like Roy Jones who were great no doubt about it. it was special but you know they declined canelo alvarez looks like a guy to me that he may decline as a fighter possibly but i think he'll adapt much better than someone like roy jones can you ain't going to see canelo alvarez be knocked out several times you may say that roy jones's peak was better than canelo's peak but canelo's longevity will be much far greater than roy jones's longevity because for me canelo has canelo is more an adaptable fighter canelo has better boxing iq uh, which means that Canelo's going to stay on top for a lot longer than someone like Roy Jones. Can Roy Jones was just more gifted than Canelo. He was just more naturally gifted, more athletically gifted than Canelo Alvarez. But Canelo Alvarez, for me, may have the better boxing IQ and the longer lo longevity because he's able to adapt his style over time. Um, and that's another thing. A lot of these guys that you see with these silky skills, they have a window. After that window, some of them are able to adapt their styles, you know, but a lot of them, some of them don't. Some of them can't. Hence why their period at the top is short-lived. That's why I respect Floyd, because he was able to adapt his style. He may have not been as naturally gifted as someone like Roy Jones, but he was able to adapt his style and stay at the top for as long. Pacquiao, he, he was a phenomenon in the sense that he was able to stay on, on top, even though he had defeats along the way, you know. He was able to stay on top with that style, which is a kind of a style which you don't expect somebody to stay on long stay on top for, for as long as Pacquiao did. So Pacquiao was a phenomenon for me as well, you know, but Canelo Alvarez is a fighter like, like a Floyd in, in the sense that he is able, I think he's going to be able to adapt his style and stay on top and, and finish on top. That's just the way I look at Canelo. Um, but leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. I, I don't think it's a bla it's a clear cut case of who's got better skills. I think you can look at it from different ways. You know, you can look at it, it depends on what style. When you get to that kind of level, Crawford, Canelo, it's kind of like what style you like better. Uh, but what I would say is that, like I said, Canelo's longevity, Canelo's level of opposition has been far greater than Crawford. So again, that's something that we have to bring into the argument as well. It's not just about who looks better, who's the more silkier, who looks more s smooth. It's not about that. It's about, it's also about that. It's, it's about that, but it's also about other things, the longevity who he's for. All of those things have to be brought into discussion when you're talking about who's the best. Yeah? So, yeah, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And guys, remember to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.